uh, I feel the spinners, uh, you know, could have done better, you know, when it comes to bowling. Uh, hi, Miss. So uh, you are mentioning the spinners didn't bowl well. You also had like a relatively lengthy discussion with Ashwin after one over where he went for many runs. Uh, was there, you know, a plan that was set in place which didn't really come up? What was the plan? No, uh, you know, I, I won't exactly share the words uh, that we mm -hmm. that we we spoke about at that point of time. But basically, you know, uh, before he mm -hmm. went on to bowl that over, I actually uh, told him, you know, this is how the wicket is and this is how you should bowl. And after the first over that he bowled, you know, I just uh, went up to him and asked whether, you know, the feedback that I gave was, you know, exactly what he felt after bowling the first over. And, you know, he agreed with me. So that's what the discussion all about. You know, I can't really put it in words. I was going to say, um, has your position on DRS changed given that George Bailey, had DRS been used, would have been out first ball? I mean, how big of an impact did that have on the game and has your position changed on it since last time you came to Australia? Well, are you indirectly saying that we don't get decisions in our favour because we don't use DRS? I'm just saying with DRS that might have changed the outcome of the game. No, it, would it could not? have, but uh, at the same time, you know, we need to push the pass to take the right decision. And you have to see, you know, how many 50-50 decisions doesn't go in our favor. And it always happens, you know, that you have to take it. But I'm still not convinced about DRS. Question from here, please. So just on the DRS again, do you feel that India almost gets punished for not using the DRS and that umpires might go the other way if it is maybe a 50-50 call or something like I, that? I may agree with you. I may agree with you. Uh, that's what. Yeah, my uh, word on Rohit's batting, and also, uh, if I may add, you think somewhere they slacked a bit, uh, you know, when uh, Rohit was batting over 100 and uh, Kohli was nearing 90, you think, and with so many wickets left, you think they could have really gone after the bowling? Yeah, you know, that's a difficult one. You have to look at what could have been a good score. As I said, you know, 310 was a very good score. You know, they batted really well, but still, if you see, you know, they got it in the last over. You know, which means, you know, I feel if we had a bowled slightly better, you know, uh, we could have put more pressure on them, you know, maybe induced a few big shots uh, quite early in the innings. But uh, that was not the case. And always you can debate whether, you know, at that point of time we could have played a, a, a bit more aggressive cricket. But also you have to realize, you know, once the platform is set and at that point of time, what happens, you know, if you lose two wickets? Because what we saw was it was easier for the set batsman to hit, you know, even for the Australian uh, batsmen, if you see the set batsmen were the ones who were hitting the big shots, but it was more difficult for the newcomers. You just come in, you know, to play the big shot. So, you know, that's a catch 22. You can always say, you know, yes, we had wickets in hand. Maybe we should have pushed, you know, we would have got another 15 runs or 20 runs, you know, but also you have to look at the other side where, you know, what if you won't have reached 310 also, you know, that can also happen in game of cricket. But overall, if you see, maybe if you're in the same situation, you know, we may bat slightly differently, but uh, still, you know, on a wicket like this, you know, 310, I felt, was a very good score. Question from Saurabh, please. Uh, Mike, uh, you spoke yesterday about uh, the fact that the batsmen don't really, uh, can't really bowl, so they are able to share the load if a bowler has an off day. Uh, that's exactly what happened today. A bowler had an off day and there was nobody to share the load. Is there a possibility of uh, rethinking anything in terms of the 11? Because uh, to get somebody who could uh, contribute a few better overs. And uh, the second uh, question is just a brief one. Uh, uh, can you have an update on Ishan Sharma's fitness or is he not fit because of uh, injury? Uh, let me answer the second one. I'll ask the first question again. Uh, uh, he had the finger injury. He was available for selection, but also there was a chance that if he get hit again, you know, in the same finger, there was chances of him mi uh, missing the four next games, you know. So he was available for selection, but it was better off not to play him and not take that e extra risk in this game. And what was the first question? <laughs> the sharing one, you know, again, if you see the batsman, the uh, only other one is Gurkirat. You know, who's there, whether we can or cannot use him, you know, how good he is as a bowler. You know, I've not seen much on, much of him, but he does bowl a few in, in the domestic circuit. And also we have to realize, you know, yesterday when I was speaking about it, I thought more about the fast bowlers. Maybe if they, you know, don't have a very good day, I have to use the spin. I never thought you know, it will be the spinners that will have a very bad day and, you know, the others will have to share that responsibility. So it's a tricky one. You know, uh, still you have to see, uh, you know, if if you see the the bowling department, you know uh, the fast bowlers did a very good job. It was the spinners that were 
uh, that could have bowled better, you know, uh, if they would have just uh, avoided the easy boundary deliveries, you know, okay, fair enough, if the batsman is hitting you uh, for a six over long on or long off, you know, that's always a good shot and with a bit of risk involved, but you know, you have to make sure with the field restriction, you don't get hit in areas, you know, where you don't have a fielder. So that's something that we'll have to avoid. Other than that, you know, whether we can or cannot, you know, it's always uh, debatable. I'll take last few questions in English. Question from here, please. Uh, MS, are the, the players united in the, the opposition to the DRS in its current form? I know Virat uh, earlier or last year spoke about sort of gauging the views of the players and what they think of the DRS. Is it, a, is it a, a, a across the board with the playing group that you're opposed to the system? Sorry. It's a very big question. I'll, I'll tell you what it is. You know, first, DRS, ideally what DRS should be, it should be the decision-making system. You know, uh, if you see the deviations in DRS, there are quite a few deviations. Even the makers agree that there's a bit of deviation that can happen. And now you have to also take into account whether it was given not out or out. You know, if it's given not out, the ball needs to touch the stump. If it's given... Uh, uh, if it's given out, it needs to touch the stump. If it's not out, then half the ball needs to hit the stump and all of that. So that itself makes the variables too big. And cricket, you know, every inch matters. You know, not even inch, it's millimeters that really matter. So, you know, DRS should be, it shouldn't be umpire's decision justification system. It should be giving the right decision. You know, like in tennis, you don't have anything that says, okay, if the umpire has given it out, you know, half the ball needs to pitch inside the line. If he has given it out, you know, then the scenario is different. So, you know, it has to be plain and simple. You don't have to keep too many things into consideration. You either say, okay, DRS, what it is, this is what it is. You know, if it doesn't matter whether it's given out or not out, you say, okay, half the ball hits the stump, you are out, irrespective of the decision. That makes it a lot simpler because now, for example, you take DRS and in an LBW decision, you know, what really changes everything is whether the decision was given in favor or not. And it can be in a margin of one inch, you know, overall. And in cricket, that's very big. I'll take last two questions. Question from Devinder and Sandeep. Uh, what about Marina Swell? I know the pressure really well. And what was really in your mind? Were you unsure whether they would hit the gloves or when it, was, it came from No, again, you know, from behind, uh, when you're moving on to the leg side, you know, unless it's very clear, you know, you find it always difficult. Uh, I felt, you know, it sounded like glove, but if you ask me like 100% whether I was sure, you know, I, I won't say I was 100% sure about it. I can ob obviously lie right now and say, yeah, yeah, I was sure about it. But, you know, I was not 100% sure about it. And, you know, it, it happens, you know, you, you appeal, it goes in your favor. At times it doesn't go in your favor. And uh, I think Barry bowled uh, really well, you know. Uh, uh, I think he, he was hitting the right areas, which I feel is important. Also being a left-arm fast bowler, you know, they have that slight advantage of, you know, that angle that goes away from the right-hander batsman. So I felt overall he bowled really well, but we'll also have to, you know, I won't make judgment based on one game because we'll have to see, you know, in the coming games when there's pressure on him, you know, right from the start, if the batsmen are set, if they're, they, he's put under pressure, you know, in, in, in the uh, first circle regulation itself. And then we'll have to see how he bowls and all of that. But overall, if you just ask me today how, how he bowled, I think he bowled really well. Last question in English, thank you. In the last match, India gave uh, uh, the score of 412. And in this match also, like the bowlers really didn't have a chance. Uh, so basically, what do you feel about the wickets and... Uh, you know, if you see one day, the wickets will generally be like this, you know, a bit up and down depending on the venue. But other than that, you know, you'll see good wickets and you'll see a lot of runs getting scored more often than not. Slightly unusual wicket for Perth. You know, usually Perth is not a place where uh, you get very high scoring games. You know, if you see the average score, it tends to be between 250 to 270 odd runs. I may be wrong, but that's how uh, it has been. Uh, but it was a very good wicket over here. If you see, you know, uh, definitely the... There was a bit of pace for the bowlers, which meant the batsmen, they can actually play their shots. Uh, but it was not like a quick Perth wicket. You know, it was slightly slower than a normal Perth wicket. So more often than not, you will find everywhere, you know, you'll, you'll get wickets that are slightly more in favor of the batsmen than bowlers. Last two questions in Hindi. I think जब भी कोई batsman एक लंबा inning खेलता है, I think उसमें सबसे important होता है वो एक बार जब 50 करता है तो 50 के बाद कैसे carry on करता है, उसके बाद 100 के बाद किस तरीके से carry on करता है, और अगर आप रोहित को देखें तो ज़्यादातर जब वो 100 करता है और एक बार 110 का score पार करता है, तो फिर काफी बड़े score की तरफ जाता है. And I think uh, it's always good, you know, when you're making a run, you have to make sure that you can make more runs. Because it's a lot of benefit for the team. Ke liye bhi 
वो टीम में एक ऐसा प्लेयर है जो आ, सारे शॉट खेलता है आ, फील्ड को भी एक्सप्लॉयड करता है बट साथ में बहुत एफर्टलेसली यू नो सारे शॉट्स खेलता है तो आ, बहुत ही अच्छी बैटिंग की उसने इम्पोर्टेंट है कि आ, अच्छे स्टार्ट के बाद वो पूरी सीरीज में अच्छा परफॉर्म करे और इस फॉर्म को कैरी फॉरवर्ड करे